Hey, 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 it's Wednesday again. You know what that means. It's time for PLZ, JR, Snipes and Stripes right here on NoFilter.net. I love this show today, PLZ. First of all, how you doing, buddy? You looking good. good? Big smile on your face. I'm good awesome, Wednesday buddy. so far. I'm awesome, ready to rock and roll. And I'll let you introduce our guest. I know you're pumped. As, as I, I am. I am pumped. You know I am pumped because we finally have somebody on the show or finally get to talk to somebody that's probably more entertaining and has more flamboyance than I do. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> and the guy that, and the guy that I've, I've really admired um, from the way he plays to the way he lives his life, to the way that he has no nonsense, no frills. And that is my boy PK Subban, who is going to join us tonight. Um, really interested to hear um, his outlook on the game. Uh, to see what it's like for him being away from the game. Uh, a couple questions that I want to ask him. There he is. Look at the man. And PK <laughs> joins the show. What's My up, goodness. guys? What's up, JR? You just oh, added a level of handsomeness to our show, pal. I love it. <laughs> hey, listen. If JR's on it, it's already it's doing well. <laughs> hey, can you see how big my smile is right now? Because I'm it's so I'm so happy to see you. It's been way too long. I'm you happy too, to bro. see you. It's you nice. too, I'm my happy friend. to do this with you guys. Well, listen, you and I have a very special bond for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. A lot, and it, I think one of them is because the way we played the game, our passion for the game, uh, what we gave to the game. But we also gave a lot more to the game. We gave it creativity. We gave it a pizzazz. We gave it a character. We gave it fun and entertainment. And you you did it better than anybody. You did it better than I did, and you've done it better than everybody else. And what what is it what is it about you, PK, that brings that energy out both on the ice, off the ice, with your fans? I mean, you are truly um the fun part of the game, man. Well, I first have to give you your flowers, JR, because I remember it like it was yesterday. Feels like yesterday I was 20 years old in Raleigh at my first All-Star game. I wasn't even an All-Star. I was part of the Young Stars. You know, there's Lidstrom on the ice. You have all these greats. And I'm one of the guys just at the end, like, of the All-Star, the, the Young Stars yeah. game. I got Jeff Skinner's jersey on, and I'm just – I'm like, Mr. Lidstrom, can you please, like, <laughs> sign this stick for me? Can you please sign this stick? And he's got 800 people because this was one of his last All-Star games. It had to be. And, you know, he's like, oh, don't worry, PK, I'll get you something. And a week later, a stick shows up, you know, in Montreal, signed by Nick Lidstrom. So, you know, I, when it came to On the Ice, I met all the great guys that I could have met. From the guys that I played with, from Scott Gomez on to Nicholas Lidstrom, guys that I played against. Chris, all were consummate professionals. They all were, and they were great examples for me. But there were a handful of interactions that I had off the ice that really influenced me. And the one with you was a great one because it was at that same All-Star game. Mm -hmm. We were in an Uber. And I got to say this for the people watching. I remember it like it was yesterday. You said, PK, I was a guy, too, that had a lot of personality that liked to go out and have fun and be myself. The only thing I'm going to ask you, and I know exactly why you told me this. You said, PK, you got to go out. You play every shift like it's your last. You don't get any days off. There's no days off. There's no <laughs> shifts off. You got you got to show up to play. You got to be a gamer. If you want to be a guy that walks around and is going to be himself, that's the way sports are. It doesn't matter. I know hockey's one way. It doesn't matter what you do in life. That's some, That's a tool to take with you. You know, no matter what, you want to take ownership of that. So, you know, I had my trainer ask me the other day, you know, where did my will come from, my drive to train? Because I'm not at the gym anymore. I do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And you asked me a question, and I think I've just always looked at it. I was so privileged. Um, you know, I think that some people probably struggle to, to look at me and see humility or not, you know, probably people that don't know me would think that I'm a cocky guy. But really, um, I'm very privileged, and I always felt privileged to have the opportunity. I just didn't want to let it slip away. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to relish that opportunity and the fullness of it, not just on the ice, but with the impact that I could have in a positive way. Like, you know, my number one thing was I never wanted to embarrass my parents. You know, my parents yeah. did such a great job with all of us. I never wanted to embarrass them. I wanted to exceed their expectations 
And I felt I did that. You know what? There's a lot of commonality, uh, ironically, between the three of us, a referee, a forward, and a defenseman. JR was telling a story uh, a few weeks ago about how, do you remember that video, PK, when he was dancing? He was... Yes. He, they yes. broke... So they broke exactly. They broke the glass. He was in Vegas. It was a it was a pre it was an exhibition game, and the glass is broken. It's taken forever, and he's dancing. And Dean Lombardi comes to him the next day and says, "You embarrass the team." So I'll give you an example because I want to talk about your fashion. Early in my career, I had a senior referee, and I won't mention his name, but he knocked on my hotel room door in Toronto at the Marriott, and he's like, "I need to speak to you for a minute." And I go, "Yeah, yeah, what's up?" And he goes. Some of the guys don't like that, you know, you're, you're wearing Hugo Boss suits. This is in the early 2000s. You're, you know, you're, 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 you're kind of dressing, you know, and isn't that unbelievable? And I see a laugh and it's like, and you went through the same thing. And it's like, I, I don't understand that. Why can't you? And, you, and that's what I, I love about you is you've always been yourself. You've never changed. But when you were showing up in Montreal and earlier in your career, hockey night in Canada, and listen, if it was Tuesday night against Columbus or it was Saturday night against Toronto, you were wearing a different suit, okay? You were wearing the A, a suit for hockey night in Canada. How Did you get pushback from some of the guys over that? Well, I'll be the first to tell you that I love the hockey culture. There are certain things about the culture of hockey – I never want to change the camaraderie amongst teammates. It's the best in the sports world. I don't think there's a better sport that has better guys than in hockey. Like that's got to be said flat out. Like, let's take that and put that aside for a second. Yeah. The culture of it. And this is what I think about when I think about fashion, style, personality, people that love that culture want to protect it. They want to protect it and they want to own it. That doesn't mean that you can't have personality and people be themselves. I think that that is welcomed when people know where it's coming from. You know, I've always been somebody who's wanted to shine the shield brighter than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the NHL be on the biggest stages. I mean, every person that I met from, you know, I had little Wayne in the, the, the box, you know, at, at the Stanley Cup final, Gary Bettman, you got Gary Bettman in there. You got Charles Barkley. You yeah. Got, you know, Bill Dick. You got everybody in there. And little Wayne's telling me he's coming to the game. And I'm like, dude, you've never met the commissioner. You got to come up. And I've been so lucky throughout my career to have been able to bring and meet people like that and involve them in our game. And, you know, the NHL's done a great job of late of bringing more people into our game. Yeah, yeah. But that was always my, that was always my goal. When it came down to dressing, small story, I didn't have a lot of money, guys. Like, I didn't have the money to buy. I own probably over 100, probably close to 100, 150 suits now. But, guys, I didn't have the money to, to do that at the start of my career. People don't know this. Before I turned pro, I had, like, 100 sketchbooks. I sketched a ton. I <laughs> no sketched. way. My sister paints. I sketched. My sister had an art scholarship, you know, lived in Florence, Italy, traveled Italy. You know, I'm sure she had, you know, Italian boyfriends while she was down there painting and having a great time. You know, I didn't get to do that. I would have loved to do that. But my passion, you know, even though I was great at hockey and I was passionate about it, I was a kid who had multiple interests. So right away, before I even got to the NHL, I was already somebody who had interest in, in art. That quickly transitioned to fashion because that was the only way I could express myself. I didn't have the time to sit down and sketch. I'm focused on hockey. So how do I get to express myself and how I feel? This is by the way I dress. And I did it within the confines of the rules. You had to wear suits to the game. You couldn't wear whatever you wanted. So I said, you know what? A lot of these things I want to try. And it was, I got my hustle on, uh, uh, JR. Yeah. Uh, honestly, JR, Timmy, I got my hustle on. There was a yep. suit company in Montreal, Sarto Rialto. They, they were at the rink after the yep. game, like the guys see the suit guys. Yep. I'm walking by. I'm one of the last guys to leave. You know this rookie. You can't leave early. I'm leaving, and the guy's there making suits. And he goes, hey, I'll make you a suit. Mark Patrick goes, I'll make you a suit. I go, well, how much are the suits? He goes, well, don't worry about it, because I'm thinking about my mom. I know the way my mom is. She's <laughs> checking off on everything. She worked in the bank for 50 years. 
I couldn't buy, you know what I mean? I couldn't scratch my butt without my mom checking the statement, <laughs> right? So, so I tell him, how much are the suits? He goes, don't worry, first one's free. Long story short, I took this guy to dinner. I liked his suits. And I told him, I said, hey, listen, I can't buy these suits every week. Like they're 3,500 bucks. I'm making 800 grand. It's a lot of money. I can get yep. some suits, but my mom's not going to let me. I got to save this. I don't know how long my career is going to be. I don't know what I'm doing. So I said to him, I said, listen, I got 41 games on national television, CBC. I said, why don't you dress me? You know, they get us coming in uh, at the game. Dress me. This is what I love to do. I want to wear my stuff. You'll get some exposure out of it. And he goes, well, how about this? Why don't I make you a few suits? We'll see how things go. And then we'll talk from there. You know, he's made me probably over probably 80 suits, 90 suits, 100. There wow. isn't a suit in my closet that isn't his. They're all custom, custom-made belts, shoes. So people also think that, like, I dress this way and because I make $9 million bucks a year. Mm -mm. No, I, I hustled my ass off yep. to do that. Like, no. I, I had to... And this is what I want players to do. If you if you're in want to build a brand, you got to work to do it. No one's going to hand you anything. It, it, I think that's what players today they don't see. They they're one dimensional, right? They go play hockey, then they go home. They don't plan for the future. They don't they don't start things early. They don't put money away properly. They don't start interests, which could lead to other businesses after hockey. And when they're done, they don't know what to do, and that they go into depression because they just they only focus on one thing. And that's that's always I've always been very very impressed with how you have just dabbled in so many different things and the interest. But on, on saying that, PK, and I think this, this goes a little bit from what Timmy asked you, but I know that I had some teammates and some people around the league that really kind of uh, brushed back on me and told, told me to tone it down, and I got comments. And some people, um, some people like, alienated me because yep. I was such a, such a um, um, not a me, me, me guy, but uh, a fun guy and a guy that, that showed personality. Did anybody, did, or, or the league, did the league ever say anything to you? Like, hey, PK, tone it down a little bit. Or guys, or the coaches, PK, tone it down a little bit. Because, I mean, Hitch used to tell me, you know, why do you got to be like this? Why do you got to be all like, why don't you just like get in the rink, get ready for a game and stop dancing around the rink, around this room and having your disco ball. And, you know, why don't you get serious? You know, yeah. I'm serious. I'm no. serious. But that guy could turn it on and turn it off. Not everybody could. Well, you, you know, I, I think first and foremost, I had a zest for life. I just a guy that like, I to, even to this day, I wake up every morning and I'm like, you know, what's the day going to bring me today? You know, how excited am I going to get? And that's why I have fun is because I make life fun. I think there's some people that wake up and don't have that privilege of having yep. that zest for a life. We're all wired differently. I think... Um, I definitely had a lot of pushback, definitely from teammates, um, definitely culturally. You know, I remember one specific time, and once again, I'm not going to name any names because a lot of these guys I'm friends with today. Like, that's a thing, too, is that I think that my perspective, my the way I was raised by my parents, like, I wasn't raised thinking about what excuses I can make for the things that I didn't get in life. Like, I was never raised that way. Yeah. Like, my parents never gave me an out. You know, so when it came to uh, culture, sex, race, religion, politics, any of those things, you know, I never draw emotion from those things, whether teammates wanted to talk about it or it was a discussion in a room, whether I was at the locker room, at the rink or at a coffee shop, because everybody's entitled to their opinion and not everybody was raised the way that I was raised. So I had a tremendous amount of thick skin for a lot of people. And that thick skin actually allowed me to educate people rather than get in fights and wrestle people. Like a lot of it is education. Some people just don't know. That's what they're accustomed to knowing. So I would walk in in Arizona. I got my shark skin plum, you know, uh, suit on and guys like, what the hell's that? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Hey, and this is not something that guys want to hear from a 21 year old or 22 year old guy. But I'm like, Hey, listen, you worry about what you're wearing. I'll worry about what I'm exactly. wearing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we yeah. don't date the same women. You worry about what you're doing. I worry about what I'm doing. Yeah, right, we need JR? more. We, we need more people with thick skin these days. Is that that is that's kind of gone out of style? Well, you know yeah. what? Listen, if you're a bad apple, you're a bad apple. Everybody's gonna see that. I don't need to be the one to point that out. I'd rather focus on the positive people and all the people that supported me and wanted to do that. And like looking back at it now, 
I look at Trevor Zekris. I look at all the players and what they're doing. Look at the stadium series and the Winter Classic. Mm -hmm. Guys are dressing up in costumes. And, like, the league is changing. Exactly. So rather than me, rather than me dwell on what's wrong with the league all the time, I want to look at some of the positives. And yes, you know, we still need to continue to push the envelope, JR, and see that needle continue to yes. move. Because there's residue still of things. Yep. We still see it in some areas, yep, right? Yeah, we do. We you do. know, so so I'm lucky. But that all those things definitely occurred during my time. But I didn't really care. I knew if I played well on the ice that nobody was going to be able to say anything to me. That was it. Yeah. The uh, the switch gears to the hockey to to playing on the ice. I I know how much and I know how much Jr. loves playing in Montreal. I know how much you love playing in Montreal. You made it to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2017 in Nashville. But for me, one of the greatest memories I have as an official, and I'm sure you're going to concur as as a player, is 2010. You guys are playing Washington. And game six, Yaroslav Halak makes 53 games. You remember that? He makes yeah. 53 saves, PK. And in that game, this is when we were told to, to have a crackdown on diving. Dan O'Rourke and I Dan O'Rourke and I are working game six, JR. It's in Montreal. We had given LaPierre a diving penalty. We had given Gianta a diving penalty. This is two diving penalties in game six. And I and I I'm sure Max is a good guy, but he tend to embellish a lot. <laughs> and, I mean, listen, and he wasn't the only one, but he was definitely amongst the list. And like it's in the yeah. third third period, and you guys are up three one, and he dives again. And I remember throwing my arm up, going, and I remember it as plain as day, going, "This may be the last penalty I call in the playoffs because they may gas me after this game." <laughs> but tell me a little bit about Montreal and that run, and how Halak was just on fire like he was unbelievable he was unbelievable and just a quick one max lapierre and this is what i'll say a lot of people have opinions of him i'm sure you have an opinion of him dealing with him i couldn't imagine what it would be like dealing with him as a referee first of all i i would never want to have to deal with them or myself to be honest but especially him but uh when i remember my first training camp so this was after i had gotten called up after I had gotten called up, made the team, I went back for rookie camp because they said, hey, would you do rookie camp? And I said, yeah, you know this. You want to make the team. Sure. You don't want to come in and feel like they're giving you special privileges. So even though I was there for the run and played well, I went down for rookie camp. And while I was in rookie camp, I was staying out by the practice rink. And Lappy hits me up. He's at the rink getting treatment. He goes, hey, he goes, what are you doing tonight? I go, I don't know. I'm just going to be at the Alt Hotel. He goes, dude, I'm going to pick you up. You come with me and I'll take you. First time I had ever been on St. Laurent Street, Max Lapierre took me out for the night. Not only took me out for the night, he didn't even drink. He took me out for the night. I don't even think because he drove me home. He drove me back to Broussard, dropped yeah. me off at my hotel and went home. Something I'll never forget. That's really that cool. guy's got the biggest heart in the world. On the ice, I don't know, a flip switch switches and he gets all yeah. nuts. But off the ice as a teammate, love playing with them. I'll never forget what he did for me. But my time in Montreal, uh, I, you know, from the very start, Yaroslav Halak coming in, Carey Price is drafted, you know, top four, fourth overall, fifth overall, top pick, and is sitting on the bench. And my bond with him at that time was exactly how he handled himself. He was a consummate professional. Like when I tell you I learned from the best, I really did learn from the best. Mm -hmm. One of the Olympics, everybody talks about, ah, oh, you didn't play, you should have played. How could they not play you? But nobody asked me about what I learned. Right. Like I got to watch Sidney Crosby every day prepare to play. I got to watch all these guys yeah. every day. And I got to be the one to come into the room after wins and them actually get to see me in a way they never got to see me. So, you know, that started in Montreal with Pricey and seeing him during the playoffs, seeing how positive he was when he wasn't in the net. And that's why when I, our bond, why we had that celebration was because that wasn't necessarily for me. I'm a hype guy. I'm always hyped. That was for me to let Pricey know that you're not alone in this. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. here. It's awesome. I got you. Like, you're not the only one that's got to answer questions when we lose. I got your back. And it's too bad that that was taken out of context because you see, you see what the goaltenders, what sway men, yeah. and th they do after every loss, Perfect. they do something. You know, for for me, 
that was about building that bond with him. And, and we did build a bond. You know, it trickled down to some of our teammates that came through. And I really believe that that's why we had some pretty exceptional years while I was there, for sure. So I, I got to ask, how, how old are you now, PK? I, I'm 34. I'll be 35 in May. Okay, so this is my question. You're, you're a beautiful, absolutely um, just full of energy guy. Yep. You played in Montreal. You played in Nashville. You played in Jersey. You retired early. And when yeah. I heard that you were retiring, I was shocked. I almost, I was, I was sad. I was shocked and I was sad and I was confused because you have so much in the tank. Why, why the, why so early? Well, I also, I also believe that when you trailblaze in any way, we spoke about it. Um, I believe that you have to make sacrifices sometimes. And I knew throughout my career, I never thought about how long I could play because I always took care of my body. I knew I'd give myself a chance to play as long as I wanted to play. But I also think that I earned my independence. And that's one thing that I, I urge athletes to do is, you know, when you step into the NHL, it's the best league in the world. There's so much that you can take from it. But your independence is, is like a handful of players get to have their independence and get to walk out and leave when they want and get to take the game and pivot and go into whatever they want to after. And that was really, really important to me to go out on my own terms. And, you know, even though I probably felt that I could play another four years, like I felt easily I could play another four years, but to not do that the way that I wanted to, I felt that I earned that right. Uh, throughout How did my you career. want to? How did you want to? Well, number one, I think that you have to be, you have to be on the same page. You know, people have to vision you and see you the way that you see yourself. Yeah. I always think that I've been a pretty realistic guy about, my game and where I'm at and what I can bring. 100%. And, a, you know, a lot of that came from playing in Jersey. Like, you know, a lot of people don't talk about this. I could have asked for a trade. I could have said, trade me. I don't want to waste my years in Jersey. Like I have more hockey to give. I never did that. I never believed in that because, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not comparing myself to Kobe, Michael Jordan at all, or any of these guys. Um, but those are the people that I looked up to. Sure. And, you know, for me, they made the best of where they were all the time. They, they tried to pull the best out of the people that they were around. And, you know, I felt really good leaving New Jersey, knowing that I had an influence on those guys, maybe in a different role than I've ever had in my career. So, you know, I think after leaving New Jersey, not getting a, a respectful offer, like, you know, number one, there's a lot of guys in the league that are playing on certain contracts that can't do the things that I can do. I'm not taking anything away from them yep, because yep. they've earned it. They've done it. They've played ball. They've gone there. They've kept their mouth shut. They're not wearing red fur coats to the game. They're not speaking their mind all the time. So, you know, I also was understanding that like people weren't on the same page, you know, maybe, maybe teams just didn't want to take on, you know, having a personality like PK in the locker room, not thinking that like the only thing for me, yeah. get the money. I'm just trying to win a cup. Like I I'm, thought that. Like I, I'm I trying thought to that. win a cup. Yep. Yeah, and that's you know what? Listen, that's opinions. That's people's opinions. It's unfortunate that people didn't pick up the phone and call me. I got a lot of people that work in management that I know that never picked up the phone and called me. Yeah. You know, and yep. said, "Hey, dude, what's the deal?" Like, yep. forget my agent. Yeah, I can sit and point fingers at my agent. People can say this, but I've been in the league for 13 years. I've represented my country. I've been at all-star games. I've been around long enough that, you know, also, you know, like, like people can call me, pick up the phone and call me and say, Hey P, do you have any interest yep. in playing for us? Yep. Like, you know, for me, if I wasn't going to get in a situation where I felt I was going to be valued in what I was worth, then, then I wouldn't go there because it's not fair to my teammates. It's an honorable thing, man. That is an yeah, honorable, it's not it's fair. An honorable, it's not fair. Not, because not many people would do that. A lot of people would just go for the money. Cause you know what? It happened to me too. Cause people didn't call. It was like it was all of a sudden it was it was a different time in my life and I was lucky I got I had a very good friend who saved my life in Doug Wilson because he was more afraid of me as a person rather than worrying about me as the entertainer or what I can do on the ice and I, I respect you I respect you so much for that it's really hard to make that decision knowing that you probably could play but knowing that you left with your head on you know, on, on top. And do you miss it though? Do you miss? No, the game? I, here's what I'll say for the record. I knew I could play. It's not a matter of whether I thought I could play or not. I still know I could play. 
You know what I mean? So I know that, but you know, it's funny because when I'm opinionated, whether it be about players or about a team, you know, the comments that I get are people are like, Oh, you're just mad that, you know, they never signed you or they never brought you there. And it's like, guys, I, I don't care. Like no. at the end of the day, you're going to be able to look back at the 13 years that I played and come up with your own opinion on where you think my game was and where I deserve, what table I deserve to sit at. I don't care. I didn't play for that. I mean, I, I looked at it. I was lucky to be in the NHL, first of all, let alone be telling people when I should when I should retire from the game. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm humble in that aspect. Um, I never took the opportunities that I was given for granted and the people that also helped me get to where I, where I am now. But I also think that there was this, I think a lot of people thought that whether I got a contract or not, that I would be fine. Oh, PK is going to be fine. And you know, sometimes it would be nice if people thought about PK, the hockey player first, rather than the guy who has a brand, who has marketing sure. opportunities, who could have a career on TV. It would be nice if people actually took the time to say, this is a kid who actually had a dream about winning a Stanley cup. Mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. let's, let's ask, let's ask that person if he's done playing or not. Right. And nobody really did ask that question. And you know, you know, that's, that's on those teams that are missing defensemen that need a guy yeah. that could bring leadership to their locker room, add in, maybe not be a guy that drives the drives the bus, even though I still think I could do that, you know, but I definitely felt that I would, I should have had an opportunity to help a team win, but you know, missing it, it's not about that. Uh, I have the luxury to be able to hang with guys whenever I want, see the guys travel whenever I want. I, I think the opportunity to be able to help a team, uh, I wish I probably would have missed it if I would have said no myself and no, and somebody would have taken it. it. It was almost like I waited long enough and there was no decision for me to make. Like yeah. it was almost like the decision was already made for me. So for me, it was like, you know what? Easy. I'm going to move in this direction. I'm going to continue. I'm going to still be a part of the game in a way that makes me happy and promote the players because that's what it's really all about. Well, there's one last thing because I know you, you, you've got uh, time. We got a couple more minutes. I can do okay. 35, so we got uh, some time. You, you won World Juniors golds. Uh, you won Olympic gold, uh, Norris trophy. But if I know the type of person you are, and Kelly Chase, my good friend, he won the, the King, he won the King Clancy Award, and you won the King Clancy Award, I think, in 2022. And was that one of the proudest? Moments? Like, first of all, where does that all the millions of dollars, you know, multi, uh, up to 10 million in Montreal that you've done for the Children's Hospital? Did that all come? From, did that all come from your family? Like, I know how tight you and your family are, and and your sisters and Malcolm and your mom and dad. Did that kind of that that the, the culture that they brought you up in PK is that kind of where that came from? You know, I, I, first of all, the culture that I was raised in was always about helping and giving back and kids. Like, you know, my mom had five kids, dedicated her life to all five of us, even though she worked in the bank for 40 years, right? Um, my dad was, you know, principal, still is a principal for over 45 plus years. Um, you know, my sisters, uh, my one sister is a principal. My other sister's a teacher. Her husband's a teacher. So, you know, it's all educators in my family. Yeah. And it, we all worked with kids. So, you know, the notion, you know, of me doing something started well before that, because that's all I really knew. So before I did the hospital donation, people don't understand. Like when I started my career, I was, you know, pretty much scared shitless to go home at Christmas time because the weather was bad. And you know this, JR. A rookie goes home for Christmas, misses practice because he can't get on a flight. Exactly. Especially me with all those fur jackets that I was wearing. <laughs> Guys were just salivating to put that fine up on the boat. So I'm like, mom, dad. And you know what? It was a part of learning. It was a part of learning and it was a part of the sacrifices I had to make. I moved away from home at 15. I made that sacrifice that I wanted to make a career out of this. And that was part of it. So at Christmas time, the first couple of years of my career, I didn't go home. I stayed home uh, in Montreal. You know, Matthew Darsh and a couple of guys used to always ask me if I'd want to come by. But you know, Christmas time, like if I have a family, you want to spend that time with your family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you rarely get that time. I never wanted to go roll up into somebody's Christmas and, and do that. So instead, what I did was I, I got uh, media relations from Montreal to get a bunch of bags uh, with toys in it. 
And New Year's Eve, I go to the children's hospital and give toys to the kids. That's great. And that's what that's how I would spend my Christmas. I did that for a couple of years, and then when I signed my contract, the the foundation came all the way down the highway, drove down the 401 to my house in Nobleton, my parents where my parents live, and they said, "Listen, we know that you care about helping and you want to help. This is about you, and we want to give you an opportunity to do something special." And they presented it to me, and in that moment. My family, I couldn't say no personally, but my family, it was my family, everybody, including brothers, sisters, everyone was like, listen, PK, if this is something you want to do, we will help you. We will support you do this no matter what, we'll help you. And, you know, at 23, 22 years old, you can't really fathom the the impact that you can have, but I knew it was the right thing. Mm -hmm. I just knew I wasn't ever going to regret doing this and making this a priority yeah. and uh you know well, what? you've changed it, it, you've changed a lot of people's lives including a family member of our our partner and boss yeah. in, in nofilter.net joe manuel who had a relative in that hospital who oh, benefited awesome. from he sent, your kind gener- generosity yeah yeah he sent us pictures yesterday yeah, and amazing about well, uh, and I'll, I'll, on a quick story on that So I had a friend of mine, Larry, I hope he's listening because he loves hockey. Uh, He's a friend of mine that I met when I was 20, very early on in my career in Montreal. Anyway, buddy of mine, we we hit it off. We became friends, hung out. Uh, At the time, we were both single, so we'd go hang out in the city. We'd hang out with friends. You know, um, obviously now I I end up getting traded, go to Nashville, but I start my foundation. And while I'm in Nashville, um, you know, he ends up settling down, you know, getting married. It has a baby prematurely. Yeah. And so, you know, my sister ends up being like, hey, do you know a guy, Larry? And I'm like, yeah, I know Larry. She's like, yeah, he had a baby prematurely. Like, you know, you should call him. I said, call him. I said, we got to we gotta get him to the children's hospital. So we literally had like a corner of the floor, like for he and his family. They yeah. went there. His baby got better. He's had more kids since then. He's moved on. Baby's healthy. So, you know. For me, I never thought about being able to actually experience those things. So when people talk about my career, yeah, it was 13 years. It was short. Yep. But people have no idea how long. God, and you did so much. There was so much. God. Actually, Karen, you know, Karen, Karen, Karen Taylor Manuel is on watching right now and says, thanks, PK. She's watching oh, you right amazing. now. Amazing. So, You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. You're so uh, welcome. Yeah, speaking of speaking of brother, I know we got to go soon. But um, Nick in the chat line says, Malcolm, Malcolm has some pretty good pipes. Is he going to sing the an- the anthem at some point <laughs> in his career? <laughs> Listen, don't get me started on Malcolm because I think that he should be in the NHL right now oh, singing. Yes. Like, he should oh, be there. Yes. And you know what, guys? I'm not – I don't bullshit. Like, you know, you know, I'm realistic. Everybody's got to pay their dues, but I really believe that kid deserves a chance. He had an outstanding year last year. I'm so proud of him as a brother. I yeah. see the work that he puts in. I really hope he gets an opportunity to get up in the in the big league and show what he can do. Um, he's went through some bad luck with injuries, but last year, after the performance that he did in Rochester, yeah. I really thought he'd get a shot this year. But uh, man, can he ever sing? That guy okay. is the most. <laughs> Buddy, I, is the most Malcolm is the most talented in the Subban family wow. by far. Wow. He can sing, dance, play both guitars, both guitars, wow. electric. He can play the piano. Like he can, he was the, he's the best at everything. Well, I text, I text PK because I was at a blues preseason game and Malcolm was playing and he stood on his head. He played unbelievable. And I text PK, well, you know, it might be tough with Bennington and Hope, but but to my point, I text you, I go, this kid needs to be playing and he can play. If I'm being frank, I see some terrible goalies in the National Hockey League tonight. Uh, You know, I mean, and why not take a chance on him? He's cheap. He's got experience in the league. But I think more importantly, I'd be more I'd be more afraid of what he's going to do. He's going to he's going to mix up your goalie rotation because he's going to compete. Yeah, I yeah. think that that's what you should want. So I hope he gets a chance. I really do. Uh, we do too. Hey, last and foremost, how, how do you like being on television? You're the perfect person for television. No, he hates it, Jerry. He hates being on TV. Listen, <laughs> I, listen. I, I, I watch. I, I watch for certain reasons. So I turn on because I want to see what PK is wearing. I want to see what he says because I know he's going to give it to me straight. Are you enjoying? Are you enjoying the TV aspect of it? Because obviously, you're born to do that. 
you know, when I really started to enjoy it, because when I retired, there's also a little bit of that humility, right? Like I, I gotta be myself on TV. When the camera comes on, I got a job to do, but there's a little bit of that humility that you want, you want people to accept you and appreciate yeah. what you do on TV. Yeah. You know, it's different than me going on the ice and playing hockey. Like this is like those families that watch. There's people that have that are real hockey fans that want to learn, that want to take something from it. So, you know, I take it very seriously. And more importantly, I take it more seriously when I think about the people that I work with. You got Messier beside you. That yeah. like, I mean, I don't even need to talk about who he is. I mean, yeah. everybody in the world. I mean, I know more about Mark Messier by the Lay's chips commercials that he used to do. <laughs> Those were my favorite commercials. I used to watch that growing up. So to be able to work with someone like him and Steve Levy, who's been in the business for 30 years, who's first of all, uh, a top notch person before anything Too professional. else. He brings, Too professional. brings his family in. ESPN has treated me great. They brought me into the family. Haven't tried to put any shackles on me or leashes on me. It's just been, it's been great for me to come in and be a part of the team. And, uh, you know, that's been fun. You know, I gave up my hockey team, but I've acquired a new team and it's been great. I'm looking forward to MetLife All-Star and then the Stanley Cup Final. I think we're going to, we're all going to learn more about each other mm -hmm. and, and create some moments. So I'm excited. Well, I see, I see you've gotten into the New York culture and the New York food because your shirt, Emilio Bellato, is the best Italian place on it the is. planet. Big Emilio Jr. and Emilio Sr., they're the best. Yes. And everybody goes to New York. Give them love. Yeah. Oh. Five, hey, 50, hey 50, 55 Houston Street, baby. Emilio Bellato is the best. JR, I, and I know we're over time. We'll take as much time as we need, but I got to say this. Uh, Emilio Jr. and his family, Best. you know, you want to talk about going to new cities. Like I went to Montreal. I didn't know a single soul when I got there. Okay. I go to Nashville, you know, knew a couple of players on the team, but didn't know anybody in Nashville. I probably have just as many friends as Nashville as I do in Montreal now. But then I come to New York and I come to New York and I'm like retired, right? I was living in Jersey, I pop into the city and I meet this guy and every single day, the first day that I met him, he was on a date with Katie Holmes. He broke up with Katie Holmes. He broke up with Katie Holmes. Two weeks later, I had just broken off my engagement a month before that. We were broken up at the same time. He's now married, he's now engaged. He's got a baby, hey, baby. he's going to get married. Right. So he's, he's in this beautiful relationship and we've been friends all the way through it. So this just isn't a, a, a restaurant for me. Like it's I consider them family, family and they're great yep. people. They don't ask to promote. They don't do that. This is like a, a family spot that's been around yep. early seventies back to when Bellotto, John Bellotto owned it in the early 1900s yep. to the seventies when Emilio yep. senior took it over. It's all just of his friends have the pictures place. around the wall. All of his friends have the pictures oh. around the wall. That all, all, none of them are here anymore. And he tells you the stories. And you know Taylor Swift made that place popular about two months ago. Now it's tough to get in, but Emilio, make sure we get in. <laughs> hey, Jr. I'm going to tell you this right now. Every night that I've been there since the first day, forget Taylor Swift for a second. Since I've been there, there are lineups every night. Yep. Yep. Out the door and around Out the, door. the block. And people are waiting in minus 15 weather. Like I'm walking in and people are outside. They got their true New Yorkers will yep. wait because the food's that good. And it's yep. first class. It's family and friends. And Emilio will come out. It. Emilio will come out and bring you in while everybody else is waiting in line. Right. So I've had, I've had Bon Jovi grab me by the arm yep. in there. I've had Cindy Lauper and their husband invite me down <laughs> to have a, and it has the best chicken parm on the planet. I'm glad you're representing. And by the way, I'm glad you're representing yourself and you never stop because PK, you know, as much, I, I love you. I always loved you. And I love you not because of, of what you are, but who you are. And you'll never change that. So I can't thank you enough for coming on Snipes and Stripes with me and Timmy. We are so excited. Our chat line is going crazy with everybody who's fans of yours and, Thanks for what you did on the ice and thanks for what you did off the ice. And um, I can't wait to see you again, buddy. Keep killing it on television. They, thank you so much. And guys, thank you so much for having me. I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. I'm going to continue. Listen, I've seen a couple episodes. I'm going to watch the show and I hope to come back on soon and talk it up with you guys. All right. Thanks. Shout out to Frosty too. 
Chris Frosty. Beto, I know Frosty's listening. I love shout the out best. To Frosty. I love Frosty too. I know he'll love the, the shout out to him yeah. and Brecken. Brecken's getting ready to to step out. I think he's he's starting off. Like Frosty had texted me the other day that he's going to be a part of the starting lineup. I think either against the Rangers or at MSG soon. So I shout out it. to Brecken. You know what? I I obviously echo uh, JR's uh, comments. PK, I loved you. I loved you on the ice. I think earlier in your career we'd probably get into it like like most young players with older refs and then as we all as we got older and both probably matured on the ice I love you I think the world of you and uh and uh we've we've got a few stories that we'll have to tell next time Oh yeah yeah no 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 yeah. we got to do that for sure next, next time you're on for the full hour and by the okay. way nice back nice backdrop I love it Hey th you hey thank you thank you thank you Jay Hey man you're you know how it is now retire you get to enjoy so I'm enjoying We love you, you think right? nobody enjoys nobody enjoys better than you bro No I love you No who has more fun than us JR who has more fun than us <laughs> <laughs> love, you, love you guys appreciate Thank it you. just yeah right. take off i love you see you buddy good love luck you guys okay bye now like do we end the show right now like the guy i had a, I'll, I'll give you a comment guy hey, buddy that's what's missing in sports 100 percent. a guy a guy i'll give you an example a guy sends a, I, I you know last few days we've been promoting pk coming on a guy that i know here in st louis he goes yeah, I won't be listening. His ego's too big. I go, well, don't listen. But I said, you don't know the person. You're 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 going off what of a, what close-minded comment. Yeah, exactly. Idiot. Exactly. I go. I go. You know. I basically said you're an idiot. You know. It's like you know. It's like people want to. Uh, uh, what do you want? What do you want? Some guy to come on and just like not say anything and like have a have a uh, phone on. And be totally serious and not have any fun. Nobody's going to want to watch that. That's not an ego. It's it's called having a personality. It's called he, being being confident in yourself. It's being an entertainer. That's what PK is, and that's why we watch television. That's why we read newspapers. That's why we watch the news because we want to see what's happening. We want to be entertained. And if he didn't do that, life would be boring. By how many watch sports? I would like to know how many podcasts he gets asked to go on a week or a month. It would be ridiculous, okay? For sure. Pat McAfee earlier today, like the guy is a big name. For he took the time for us because he thinks a lot of you and me, and and he's just a tremendous person. And I just I love the guy, and uh, I love listening to him. He was a, I loved him when he played in Montreal, man. He when he he was in Montreal, he was he was the, he was awesome. He, well, you know what I love? Awesome. You know what I love about guys like PK. It's because we we don't need to fill time. We don't need to have a whole list of questions to ask him because he's going to give a, a one word answer or a short sentence. You ask him a question and he goes uh -huh. and he just takes off and he entertains everybody in his voice, his enthusiasm, his answers, his stories, you know. You know, Heather Palmer, I'm blown away. You know, he's amazing. His energy and his passion. Heather, you're right. It's a, it's exactly what he does. It just brings out so much, you know. He's so, the type of guy you want to hang around because yeah. it just makes your day better. So, you know what? Uh, let's, jump, let's jump around the league. We got to we gotta hit a couple things hey, before we first this all, yeah, First of all, we got to talk about, did anyone on January 10th, Think that the Winnipeg Jets, Jr., would be first in the NHL? First, nobody, 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 nobody. No. The surprise. Oh, and by the way, with old Kyle Connor, right? Yes, who's been <laughs> injured? Um, absolutely, the surprise of the season so far. You know, I gave I gave Rick Tockett the uh, the coach of the year nod. I uh, did too. Rick, Rick, Rick bonus has got to be right there with them. I mean, what these two teams with Vancouver and Winnipeg are doing right now, um, a defying at everybody's beliefs on what they thought in the beginning of the year. And you got to give them so much credit. You know how hard it is to play in Winnipeg? Number one, it's freezing cold, like seriously freezing cold. Sleep like cold. the hairs, the hairs on your nuts will freeze as soon as you walk out. Right. It's awful. And then you have a you have a building there. You have sixteen thousand people, so it's not 14, a big building. Fourteen. It's a, it's um, you know, it's a hockey craze place. But I think I still think Winnipeg is caught in the sixties too. I mean, it's like it's it's 
it's a crazy place, but the people and the hockey there is they're ra they're rabid fans, and they deserve what's going on right now. People are amazing. They have great ownership in Mark Chipman. I'm a big Rick Bonus fan. I've known Rick for yeah. 30 Me years. Too. Me too. Me too. I'm big fans of both of them. Chipman is an amazing owner, and Bonus is one of the best hockey minds uh, in the game. In and, the game. and just a good person too. Besides the hockey part, Rick yes. Bonus. There's a reason that he he every. He, every team had him as an assistant coach because the players just loved playing for him. So yeah, it's exactly. incredible. I love it. We got to talk about Willie Styles Nylander getting ninety two and a half million dollars. Wow! They, you know what? He, you know what? He deserves it. He deserves every every. Deserves it. I mean, he's um, you know, he took a he took a lot of heat a few years back when he was a holdout when he was trying to sign. Um, he had a couple tough years. He stuck with it. He's he's been the third in line behind Marner. Tavares and Matthews as oh, terms wow. of, of terms of, you know, the, the status quo line, you know, your hierarchy. And he never said anything. You know what he does? He goes out and he plays, he plays hard. He plays with aggression. He's now he's taken his game to another level and he deserves what he had. And he wanted to stay in Toronto. I mean, that that's a hard sign for Toronto with as much money as they're putting out right now. And to throw another 11 million at another player is very difficult cap wise but they understand how important he is and you know you know he deserves it good for him you've got 45 46 million dollars tied up in four players jr at some point in time you know that that's it, it has it's gonna to hurt it's it gonna has hurt. to impact your team it has to and I, I, their goaltending their goaltending situation their, their goaltenders are going to be making 700 and 800 you know respectful uh, res respective right i just and, i I don't see that team, you know, I, I, I love the Maple Leafs. I love the fans. I grew up a Maple Leaf fan. I'm rooting for them. You know, they haven't won a cup in, in uh, 57, 60, 50, 60, 50, 67 years, sorry, 1957 yeah, yeah. or 1967. Sorry. And, uh, but I just don't know how you build a team when you play paying four guys, forty five million. Well, the only thing that I think that they have to really look look at, which is going to be their 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 hopefully their saving grace, um, they have one more year at Tavares's big contract. Yeah. Right, and then Tavares Tavares numbers come off the books. Uh, we had a conversation this morning on after the whistle with uh, Andrew Andrew um, and Rivs talking about, you know, they're probably not going to bring back Max Domi next year. They probably won't bring back. Bertuzzi maybe next year so you drop a little bit of of salary there yeah Bertuzzi maybe maybe maybe, maybe does does John Tavares just sit there he's made so much money he loves Toronto does he just sit in the Toronto and say you know what just give me a million bucks let's try to win a cup I don't it's not about the money it's about trying to win here in Toronto because he would love to be a part of bring a cup back there does John Tavares just take a million bucks at the end of his career and no. allow Toronto to go sign some quality players that will fill in those holes. That's a really, really good point by you um, because – Actually, I can't take credit for it because it was – actually, I think it was Peters or or or, in, or, or, uh, or Craig this morning. That, he, doesn't want to, right. he doesn't want to go to, a, to another team at this point in his career. You no. would not – so no. – you know what? We'll see what's going to happen. We got a lot to cover over the next few minutes. I want to talk about uh, the cutters. Let me, just, let me just answer a question for Colin has on the chat. Yes. Yeah. Do they do they trade Marner this summer? They can't trade Marner. Marner's got a no move contract, no move clause. So in order to trade any of them now, they got they have to get permission from the player. And I don't think any of them are leaving Toronto to tell you the truth. But go ahead. Um, no. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about Gauthier and Philly. Let's talk about Cutter Gauthier. First of all, uh, two things that I want to talk about. The first is people are all up in arms about this guy not wanting to play in Philly. Uh, I don't agree with with his decision, but that's it's, it's his decision, and it's his, it's his parents' decision, it's his agent's decision. But for this podcast guy to to uh, to say on air that this has got Kevin Hayes's fingerprints written all over it. I think is is complete and utter bullshit. And not only is it bullshit, but it's a joke. And, and shame on that guy for and, even 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 having that idea that Kevin Hayes did something. But but see, so let's let's put let's fill everybody in. 
this podcast thinks that the podcast guy thinks that Kevin Hayes convinced Gauthier not to go to Philly. Correct. First of all, first of all, Kevin Hayes is one of the classiest guys in the world. He's 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 a great person. He loves his game. He loves his team. He loved Philly. It didn't work out for him. He's not going to sit there and and blackball Philly. He no. doesn't even know the kid. He, he's he played, played golf with. He played golf with him one time because he was played a fifth nine round pick. Yeah, played nine holes of golf, and the kid didn't have enough respect. He left after nine holes. So and he the, was late. He was late. So the, Kevin Kevin Hayes could care less about this kid. He wouldn't say anything to him. To the listeners out there, then all of a sudden Kevin Hayes started getting messages. I'm glad your brother overdosed. I'm glad your brother. Can dead. you believe that? No, it's fucking. Can it's you? Disgusting. Can you? Like it's I don't. Disgusting. Care. It's disgusting. It's. I dis- don't care what you've done or what people insinuate that you've done. Nothing. Nothing deserves a comment like a comment like that about Nothing. his brother passing away. Nothing. I mean, shame on everybody. And I'm telling you what, I'm a huge Flyer fan. I I love my Flyer fans. Are. But if there is a Flyer fan that says something like that to Kevin Hayes about his brother, if I was there, I would punch that mother right in the mouth. And yep. I would not care. I would not care how much I got sued or if I went to jail because that is utterly disrespectful to a good man and a good family. A good family, the Hayes family is, and a huge history and a hockey background. This, this guy, this, shame on all those people. This but, guy, but the Kevin but, Hayes has been through so much, and no one's reported this. And this is the first time that I, I'm saying anything about it. Is uh, uh, Cutter Gauthier's agent is a guy by the name of Kurt Overhart. He's got a, quite a few players in the in the National Hockey League, and he was also the agent to Brandon Dubinsky. And Brandon Dubinsky played for Torts in uh, Columbus. And I know know that. And Brandon's made it very clear that he can't stand Torts. And so there's a lot of rumor, mm-hmm. a lot of rumor mm-hmm. saying that because of the, the agent saying you don't want to go to, to Philadelphia and play for torts. So this isn't on Kevin Hayes. This isn't on no. – I don't think it's on the Philadelphia Flyers organization. No. This no. isn't on the – Well, it might, it, might, it might be a little bit because from, from reports, Goche wanted to go play with the Flyers last year, but the Flyers said we can't do it because of because of cap reasons or because yeah. it's, it's just not fitting right now and told him that, that they're not going to bring him in. And whether he has an ego – or whether he has certain opinions of himself, which is fine. Yeah. He's got that prerogative to do. And if he wants to hold a grudge against the team for not bringing him in when he wants to, that becomes Cutter Goche's problem. You know why? Because now he pissed off the wrong fan base. Oh my off. God. They're he, gonna just go pissed off. He, he just pissed he just pissed off people that booed Santa Claus. Okay. Yeah, they snowballed these, Santa Claus. Yeah. These guys, so I don't think. Gauthier really did his homework on how good Philly is and how good he could have been in Philly. First of all, the fans are amazing. They will support a guy that works and goes out and plays and performs and and, and produces like nobody else. What they do for me still today is yeah. is beyond my Flyer fans. But he could have he could have had that team. That could have been his team, right? Hundred percent. Can you, he's can playing you in a hockey market, and he's playing in a big hockey market in a big city. Now he's going to go to Anaheim, and nobody's going to know where, who he is. Nobody's going to know who he is. Can you imagine Jamie Drysidel? His first shift uh, in Philly, they Drysdale. are going to give him Drysdale. 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 They're going to give him a standing ovation. They are going to love this yep. kid in yep. Philadelphia. And you know what? The only problem I have with the whole thing is, if you don't want to sign in Philly, that's your own prerogative. But when when Philly, Philly management is at the World Juniors, and you won't even meet with them. Have the balls to just say, hey, guys, I'm not going to sign with yeah. you guys. Yeah. Try to make a well, trade. And you know what? I'll give Danny Barrera a lot of credit. He, yeah. he and, and Jonesy. And Jonesy, and they Jonesy. handled it with class. They handled it with handled class. It. And they got they a good player in return. So. Yep. And they're doing great things with that team. And uh, I wish them the best. I think I think Drysdale is a very good addition to that team. It's what they need. They need a good puck-moving defenseman that can anchor a power play, and they will get some good offense. Um, if they can get this Russian kid in there, I mean, it's going to be great. So oh, look, for, look for great things from Philly. And I am not, I am not, Tim, going to miss that first game that Anaheim comes to Philly. Oh and my I cannot God. wait. I cannot wait. And listen, I'm not I'm not bashing Cutter Gauthier. I'm not. But he could have handled this way better, 
with way more dignity and class. And I think I think you're right. I think you're onto something. I think his agent said you don't want to play for torts. Well, a couple things. We, first of all, we we have to thank our sponsors before we leave. But um, uh, Connor McDavid. Anytime there's a there's a quote from Connor McDavid, it's always newsworthy. Last night he said there was a five. It was five minute plus. Connor kind of exaggerated. He said, "Hey, it took him fifteen minutes." There was a, a, a offside challenge in Chicago, but five minutes, as you know, hockey time feels like fifteen minutes in real yeah, time. Bro. Okay, is it really? It, the it's problem time. is if you can't tell in the first minute or two, drop the puck. Can you, you imagine? They, no, you, you know what. To, you know, Tim, they, they need to just eliminate that all in, all in all, in general. They need to eliminate the offside challenge and video and just take it right out. I just agree. Don't even institute it anymore. But they, stupid. they won't, but it's ridiculous. Five minutes yeah. looking at an offside goal. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but you know what's not offsides? You know what's not offsides? Whiskey in the Wild, baby. Love Another it. proud sponsor, Whiskey in the Wild, right here on Snipes and Stripes. Yes, I am drinking, Nick. You said something earlier. I just stopped for the first week, but I'm back on the juice. So my whiskey, go to uh, whiskeyinthewild.com. For those of you in the States and Canada, we'll be there in the summer. It's the best ever. So, Well, hopefully in Missouri. I'm hoping you do a launch with our good buddy, Reed Lowe, who played in the National Hockey League. Is a tough we are. Yep, I'm hoping, we are. I'm yeah, hoping to get you up right here. Now about getting into St. Louis. Here we I go. Love it. I love it. Listen, we have to thank Bet Online, uh, one of our great sponsors. With the NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing, Bet Online is you covered with the, all the up to second odds, news, and scores with additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile. You can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember to use your co promo code BLEAVE, B L E A V, to receive your 50%, 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Absolutely fantastic. And by the way, thank you for using your wife's glasses to make that. You look great. You look great on that. Well so, done. Well done. I think Kelly Chase wears these too. Chaser gave me a pair. Well, sure. listen, that's a great show. Listen, we, we got to thank PK Subban. We thank everybody on the chat line. I've been reading everybody's chats. Everybody was so excited to listen to, to PK. Thanks for joining. Tim, great stuff today. Thanks for uh, for setting up that uh, interview with PK. Uh, again, give you all that credit. Next week, we're hoping to have Paul Bissonette, the Biz Nasty. on the Biz Nasty. On that. So we're going to have two back-to-back -back great guests, buddy. Um Buddy, I hope your 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 new 2024 is starting off with a bang. Uh, excited to see you next week. Uh, it is my birthday next Wednesday, so we'll be celebrating Hi. my birthday right here on the podcast. So from Jeremy Ronick and Tim Peel, we thank you from Snipes and Stripes and NoFilter.net. We will see you next Wednesday for another dynamite show. We are sure to impress with the biz.